Hey team, welcome back to the channel, man. I'm stoked to see you. So I'm trying to get these things cranked out as quickly as I can, uh, especially when when you all are the ones who are leaving some comments like, "Hey, Stoke, man, can you can, can you bring this particular subject area to the table?" So I am working on all of them. I, I hear you. I see you. I just I, I I'm doing this as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I do appreciate you guys hanging out and, and all the feedback that we've been getting. Uh, so today, in this particular one, we're going to talk about uh, uh, ADP 5-0 and ADRP 5-0, which is the operations process. And what I did was, was uh, this is not on my uh, MOI, and that's what I'm going to challenge and encourage you to do, is however you're going to study, build your studying process off of your MOI, right? Does that make sense? Um, and I think in the future, I'm going to change this up as well. So instead of like printing off questions, um, I'm going to, we're, we're going to walk through some of the regulations on this stuff to get even more context and flavor and take a little bit longer to dive in, to understand some of these things. Cause I think when you all said it the best, you know, sometimes we just, we just need a little bit of, we need a little clarity. We need a little, we need, we need a little insight. We need just a little Jib jab talk about some of the stuff to help make it sense, and that totally makes sense to me. So, although this is not uh, on my subject areas uh, for our boards, uh, this is a great and this is a very common one. And I did; I, I just went through real quick and I and I hand jammed out a, a few questions, uh, made some highlights as you could see, and we're gonna start talking through this. Uh, so, of course, ADP 5-0 covers uh, the operations process. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of boards that are still asking, you know, basic questions like that. Like, what is the ADP that covers the operations process? Or which process covers uh, the operations? Or which regulation covers the operations process? Things like this. And so, if you, if you are being asked questions like that, I mean, awesome, because that's like taking easy, free chicken dinner money. Um, what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to do this throughout this video, I'm going to try to anyways, and that is to give you some tips and tricks on how to answer some questions. So in this first one is to make sure that you use part of the answer inside your question. So if the question was, what uh, does ADP 5-0 cover? The proper response wouldn't just be the operations process. Because uh, now you're you're not controlling the board as much as you should have, and that's what it's all about. It's about controlling the flow, controlling the narrative. Man, this is your board. I'm sitting here at this table. We're sitting here at this table because you are standing right there. So, the proper way to answer, the best way. To, I mean, it's a, and a way is to just shout it out. But maybe the better way would be to say something like, "The ADP that cover." Or uh, my fault, you're bad. ADP 5-0 covers the operations process. Add in a first sergeant, add in a sergeant major, whoever it is that you're sergeant, whoever it is that you're talking to, right? Sergeant, ADP 5-0 covers the operations process. Mm. Uh, so it, next up is what does the operations process constitute uh, for the Army? And so here we get into some words and phrases, and I use this phrase like all the time for other board questions, like how would you uh, plan, prepare, execute, and assess giving this training or giving that training? And where I get that phrase from is the operations process. It's from ADP 5-0 because that's what the operations process is all about. It's all about planning, preparing, executing, and assessing our operations. And, of course, it accounts for the complex, ever-changing, and uncertain nature of operations, right? And all, all we're saying there is that every time we get out, like Murphy's out there, and that's a, that's a, 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 this is a fancy way of saying it accounts for Murphy, right? For all the times that things are going to go wrong. What is the Army's framework for exercising mission command, right? And that's the operations process. And I'm going to do a separate mission command uh, video, uh, but the, in the operations process, in 5-0, uh, we're going we're gonna to see a lot of things on the mission command. And so there are a few major mission command activities, and that's planning, preparing, executing, and assessing, right? We just said that before, right? Plan, prepare, execute, and assess. That's what the commander does to account for the complex, ever-changing, and dynamic and uncertain nature of our operations. 
So how do commanders use the operations process? And here, this is trick number two. We can see we have this big old uh, paragraph, right? I'm going to read it verbatim here at first. It says that through the support of their staff to drive conceptual and detailed planning operations to understand, visualize, describe their operational environment, make and articulate decisions, direct, lead, and assess military operations. So you'll notice a few key things in here that, that are we're seeing all the time, right? The operations process is plan, prepare, execute, and assess, right? The major command activities performed during operations, plan, prepare, execute, and assess. How does the commander use the operations process? He uses it to plan, prepare, execute, and assess. <laughs> you starting to see a theme here? Do, do, you starting to see a theme here? Um, and of course, how the commander does it is through the staff, right? Commanders, they can lead on their own, but no man is an island, and that's why you have a staff, and for all your staff functions out there. And there are seven steps uh, uh, to the MDMPs, and it's a military decision-making process. And this one is a... a MDMP can come out in, in a lot of different ways. It's MDMP, by the way, is basically TLPs at the battalion level and higher. This is how commanders uh, delve in with problems and come up with with uh, COAs for like how we're going to go to the field and things of this nature. At least that's what they uh, should be doing in a in a brief COA brief. Yeah. So receipt of the mission, and then you analyze uh, the mission. And then you uh, develop, analyze, and compare COAs. And then you present those COAs for approval. So that's the next step is, is COA approval. That's course of action. And then you have uh, your orders production, right? So it's all, it's all pretty straightforward. And then all, ADP all also going to go into TLPs. And so that's, uh, of course, receive the mission, issue the order, uh, make a tentative plan, initiate movement, complete your plan, uh, don't forget to conduct your reconnaissance, uh, and then complete the plan, issue the order, supervise, and refine. And I, I just need a little bit more coffee. And TLPs, by the way, I'm going to expect um, sergeants to know that, that for sure. Like if, you, if you're appearing before the staff sergeant board, I'm going to expect you to be able to talk through TLPs in the eight-step training model. I'm going to expect you to have a decent grasp on MDMP because even though that, that's staff-level stuff, it's, it's how we deal with problems. And then what is the one-third, two-thirds rule? So you'll hear, this is, <laughs> this is something that we are horrible at. It's a rule, for crying out loud, it's a rule. And, and we're horrible at keeping our own stinking rules. So the one-third, two-thirds rule is, is this. So as the senior, right, if I'm giving you, if I have, let's say I'm getting ready to go to the field and I have uh, X amount of time, right, uh, to start cranking things. In fact, you know, the, the, the way we generally do things at a bare minimum, you know, just talking short range stuff, like I, I should be cranking out training plans every eight week, every week for the eight weeks down the road, right? Week, week after week, like, here's what's happening eight weeks from now. Here's what's happening eight weeks from now. That way it gives you predictability about what is going to happen eight weeks from now, right? On that DTMS training calendar that nobody reads. So the way staff should be driving and, and senior commanders should be driving the operations process, and it should this is something that should trickle all the way down, is the one-third, two-thirds rule. So I give you the plan, right? Op order, prepare to copy. And then you copy this down. And I, I just, I, I, right, so what did I just do? I went through TLP number one, right, or uh, MDMP step number seven, right? I gave out the order. Now, with the amount of time that's left, you break up that time. And one-third of that time is not my time. It's your time to plan. Plan for the mission. And then two thirds uh, of the time, and maybe I'm jacking this up a little bit, but we're going to get through this, is for you to be able to plan and execute. So I'm going to use one third of the time. See, that's my fault. You're bad, right? You, that's something else you can put in your kit bag. 
My fault. Your bad. One third of the total amount of time allocated between now and the time that we're going to execute is my time to plan. So if something's, uh, and then two thirds of that time should be your time to plan your own planning, to to re and uh, to rehearse, not to execute, but to rehearse. Right. We got to do a better job at this. So uh, I hope that helped out. I know it's not a lot of situational questions, but uh, some situational questions might be like. Uh, how do you fit in to the operations process? Well, you know, as a team leader, I'm going to fit in the operations process by continuing continuously providing feedback so that my commander can make those assessments as one of the key steps of the operations process of planning, preparing, executing, and assessing. And, of course, I am the one who's out there executing with my soldiers. We're the ones actually doing the work so that the commander can make an assessment on our medal, which is, of course, a mission essential task list. Right? That might be a, way, a, a situational question. Um, you're, you have a soldier who uh, says, Hey, Sarge, well, what's your response? <laughs> At ease, killer. <laughs> um Why why do I constantly not have predictability? What is your response? Well, I'm going to inform that soldier to go out and look at that DTMS training calendar because my commander has been uh, providing these eight weeks out consistently. And even more so, I provide my own battle rhythm for my team during the counseling process. And in this in this battle rhythm, I, I let them know exactly not only what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that's repetitive, whether it's weekly, monthly, or quarterly, but I also let them know what's coming up down the road in, in the next month. Right? This, is what we're, this is what we have coming up in that counseling process. So you can kind of tie in your counseling and your own planning, right? Your your portion of that two-thirds rule because you are looking at the training calendar as an NCO. Man, you can't not look and be abreast of what's on that thing. So then use that to your advantage and just kind of tie in some other uh, things that you do at your echelon. Uh, but just a couple of spitball and uh, situational questions. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Or we can keep this conversation rolling. If you enjoyed the content of this video, smash that like button. Consider sharing this out with some of your battle buddies who might could use this as well. And until then, man, y'all stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.